When it comes to indoor radiation detection, the best the world has to offer right now are handheld devices. In an overseas hostile environment, the initial entry units that deal with radiological contamination in buildings are stuck with putting on very bulky suits and walking in with a handheld Geiger counter. This puts any initial entry team into severe danger as they won't know the radiation levels inside the building until they are within arm's reach. This is unacceptable and we are here to change that with Radbot. Radbot is a tether-driven ground robot capable of navigating cluttered environments and detecting and localizing radiation. Radbot is made up of three major subcomponents: the mapping and navigation, radiological detection and localization, and the tether management system. The tether will be 50 meters long to allow the initial entry team to operate the Radbot from a safe distance. Radbot is equipped with a camera with 360 degree and infrared capability, a Velodyne 16 laser LiDAR, five sodium iodide thallium doped gamma ray detectors to detect and localize the radiation hotspots, and a state of the art tether management system. As you can see here, the LiDAR and camera are mounted high and center for optimal visibility. The five sodium iodide detectors are arrayed and mounted on the front of Radbot to allow for the least amount of obstructions upon entering the building. The 50 meter tether will sit on its spool center of Radbot with a tension control arm feeding it out the rear. Radbot will receive both power and signal through the tether to ensure the most reliable connection to the user. Having local tension and a motor speed that matches Radbot's allows us to lay the tether on the ground tension free. This prevents the tether from dragging on the ground and getting caught up on obstacles or clutter as the user navigates the environment. To back up, you simply spin the camera around and follow your tether out. The motor control system will automatically reverse and re-spool the tether at the rate of travel. While this is going on, Radbot is also producing a real-time floor plan and radiation heat map of the environment on the user's computer screen. As you can see, there are a number of obstacles within this environment. Radbot will use its LiDAR sensors and its Google Cartographer mapping to build a map and allow the operator to navigate around these obstacles. Arviz will use Google Cartographer to map the same gazebo environment you all just saw. I'll start by setting a 2D dimensional goal for Radbot to navigate for. Radbot will be using the data from its LiDAR sensors and its Cartographer mapping algorithm to dynamically build a map of its environment. Cartographer uses combined data from local maps to form one large global map of its environment. As you can see from Radbot's movement throughout the map, Radbot has recognized a number of nearby obstacles. Next, we'll be moving to the heat map simulation. The heat map runs in R is the same as before, except now there are green dots to represent places where Radbot detects no radiation and red dots where Radbot does detect radiation. You'll see as Radbot moves throughout its environment, it detects red dots at certain locations and maps this according to the heat map. This data is hard-coded into the program, and in future implementations, real data would be used according to Radbot's XY coordinates and data from the radiation sensors. This heat map is expected to be joined with the cartographer map to form a single, complete picture for the Radbot operators. Because the individual sensors are not directional, the radiation sensors are arrayed in a specific way to create an effect called self-occlusion, which is where they block signal from one another based on the position of the radiation source. This allows for higher counts to be detected by the closest sensor. The four outside detectors determine X, Y, or horizontal position, while the fifth detector is lowered and in the middle to determine Z direction or vertical position. To prove this concept, we ran a test from 0 to 360 degrees with a constantly moving source. The sensors were then turned on their side to test the, the Z direction. This was the result of that test, showing that they are in fact occluding each other, and they can help us to determine the direction and magnitude of the radiation source in reference to a known current XYZ position. We put all those systems together to create Radbot. This video is courtesy of the United States Military Academy 2020 Radbot Capstone Group. Thank you.